Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Nanad Devaka. I am a technical marketing engineer with the Catalyst 9000 Switching Group. Uh, this is the first in a series of videos that talks about the QS implementation on our Catalyst 9000 series of switches. Now, here we're going to start with the absolute basics where we're going to be talking about the QS fundamentals. Uh, we'll start off with what QS is and why we need QS before looking at the different components of the QS toolset. Before we close the video, we'll be taking a look at the implementation of QS at a hardware level on our UADP-based family of switches. Uh, again, this is going to be the first in a series of videos. So the immediately following this video, the part two of the video will cover building a configuration from the ground up for the UADP-based family of switches. And we have a complete new set of videos that will be coming out for those switches which are powered by the Cisco Silicon One Q200 ASIC. The first question that we need to ask ourselves is why do we need QoS or what problem is QoS helping to solve? And the way that we can explain this problem is by making use of a use case over here. Now let's consider a scenario where we have two different users who are sending traffic through the same switch and a common egress interface. So we have one user who's trying to access a business critical server and you have another user who's trying to watch a YouTube video. Now, the switch does not know how to differentiate between these two traffic. So it's going to treat both traffic the same. And it's going to be a first-in-first first out operation. So the traffic that it receives first, it's going to process the traffic and it's going to send it out. The packet that it receives second is going to process that packet second and it's going to send it out. The problem arises over here because these two traffics are not created equal. Now, your user, when you're trying to access a uh, a business critical server it is a lot more important for this traffic to go across when you compare it to a user who's trying to watch a youtube video so what qs does is it gives us a set of tools that allows us to uh, uh, that allows us to identify the type of traffic that's coming into the system and it allows us to treat the traffic differently so now looking at the same example with qs configured same example, we have two users, one trying to access a business critical server, another trying to watch a YouTube video. Now here, even though we have a single physical egress interface, within the egress interface, we have different queues. So we have a separate queue for the user who's trying to access the server, and we have a separate queue for the user who's trying to watch a YouTube video. And we can now define different rule sets for each of these queues. So we can prioritize uh, one queue over the other. So with QoS, what we can do is we can identify the traffic that's coming in, that's point number one, and then we can prioritize and change the order and how the, process, the packets are processed before it's being sent out. So that brings us to what are the various components that QoS brings to the table, right? What are the different applications or what are the different things that QoS can help us do? So first one is going to be identify the traffic coming in. Because one, we need to be able to distinguish between a high priority traffic and we need to be able to distinguish between a low priority traffic. And the way we do this is by using a method that we call classification. Here we identify the traffic that's coming into the system. Once we've identified the traffic coming into the system, we want to treat the traffic differently. So we, the, the way we do it is by making use of tools such as scheduling and queuing. Next, we want to label the traffic. Right now, the lab, uh, this label can either be referenced at a later point within the same switch, or it can be referenced at a device downstream or upstream to the switch that we're working on right now. The way we label it is called marking, and plus there's a place in the basic part over here. <clears throat> Next, we might want to limit the traffic that is traversing to the system. We have two options over here: we have policing and shaping. Uh, we'll be looking at both of these in more details in the coming slide. And the final thing that QoS brings to the table is what happens when the switch is congested? How should the switch act with respect to the traffic that it's trying to send out? QoS helps us to define the behavior of, that the switch needs to follow when such a congestion happens. <clears throat> so putting it all together, what is the purpose of the end goal of QoS? Uh, the end goal of QoS is to ensure the user experience. So spending a minute to understand what this means. Uh, first, we want to ensure that the voice and the video quality is taken care of. Let us consider a user who's trying to place either a voice call or a video call. We want to ensure that the voice call is clear. It happens immediately. There's no form, there's no dropped 
frames or drop latency anywhere. Secondly, when it comes to the video quality, you want to ensure that we have sufficient bandwidth to ensure that the video quality and the high definition video gets across without there being any degradation in quality. And you also want to ensure that the latency is low enough so that there is no drops or jitter anywhere in, in terms of the video quality. Apart from the voice and video, you also want to ensure that there are certain business critical traffic that traverses to your system. You want to ensure that this traffic is prioritized when you compare it with your non-business critical applications like YouTube or Torrents, for example. Finally, you want to protect the network. The QoS helps us to provide tools to help protect the network both from external events as well as from events that originate within the box itself by protecting the control plane. The final key component that QS helps us define is it helps us define the latency priority for your traffic packets. We'll be talking about this latency priority in a lot more detail when we talk about the QS implementation on our Cisco Silicon One Q200 based uh, Catalyst 9000 switches. However, the latency priority is equally important when we talk about the UADP based implementation. So with that, let's cover each of the different components that make up the QoS toolset. We'll start off with classification. Now, classification is a method where we use common parameters to match and identify the traffic coming into the system. So if you look at the graphic at the center of the slide right now, uh, to the left, what we have is we have a mixture of different types of traffic that is coming into the system. And without classification, the switch would have no way of, of detecting and identifying the type of traffic that's coming in. So each of this traffic is going to be sent, uh, is going to be processed in a first-in, first-out manner. Now, with classification, we can now separate that into different different queues. So we have wipe and web is going into a different queue. We have email and HTTP going into a separate queue. And we have backup going into a separate queue. So now the first step before we apply different actions depending upon the queue that the packet goes to. Classification helps us to identify the traffic that's coming in. And the way that we can perform this identification is, to, uh, is by making use of common parameters and exactly what these common parameters are. If you look at on the ingress side, we can use the DSCP tags, we can use the cross tags or IP precedence tags. Or if you're working with an MPLS network, you can use the MPLS EXP tags. And in addition to this, we can also use ACLs, VLANs and uh, NBAR protocol packs. On the egress side, uh, we can use DSCP cause IP precedence as well as NPLS EXP. And we can also use cause groups uh, where we can set the cause group on the ingress side and we can call it on the egress side. Once we have classified the traffic, we might want to police the traffic. Uh, by policing, what I mean is we might want to limit the traffic to a certain rate. Uh, what happens to the excess traffic is the excess traffic is simply going to be dropped. Now, the way we configure this is we can either have a binary configuration where we define a particular rate, and if traffic exceeds the particular rate, then we're simply going to be dropping all of the traffic. Or if you want things a bit more granular, we have the option to define two separate rates. So as long as traffic exceeds the lower rate, uh, but is less than the higher rate, then we're still going to continue processing the packet packets but we're going to take some form of corrective action. But once traffic exceeds even the second rate, then we're going to start dropping all the packets. Here we come to the most important aspect when we talk about the QoS implementation on our UDP boxes, and that is queuing. Uh, with classification, we have identified the traffic and have split it. Now, in queuing, we're going to send the traffic into different queues, and we're going to define different actions for each of the queues. So you have high priority traffic that will go into a high priority queue and you want to be treated differently when you compare it with the traffic that's going into a low priority queue. So on the UADP side, we can have a total of up to eight queues. Now we can have two types of queues. It can either be a priority queue or it can be a normal queue. Now all eight queues can be normal queues. Alternatively, you can have two queues which can act as priority. Uh, what these mean, what does priority queue mean and what the normal queue mean, we'll be taking a look at when we talk about the scheduling in the next slide. Coming to scheduling, scheduling is the algorithm that is used by the switch to determine the order in which the packets are sent out of the switch. So essentially the switch scheduler determines which queue can send traffic out and where. 
right? And looking at the way the scheduler defines and determines this, uh, it's we're using a series of easy to understand rules. Uh, the first rule is strict priority queue will always be uh, serviced. So what does this mean? This means that as long as there's traffic in the priority queue, then the traffic in the priority queue will be serviced and will be allowed to process and send the traffic out at the expense of the traffic that's coming into the remaining queues. Now we can have up to two priority queues, priority queue 1 and priority queue 2. So priority queue 1 would have the absolute priority. So this means that if traffic is coming into both priority queue 1 and 2 simultaneously, then a traffic in priority queue 1 would be processed first and priority queue 2 would be processed only when priority queue 1 is empty. Now the rest of the queues, which are the normal queues, they get to fight over the remaining bandwidth once the priority queues have have done processing uh, the traffic in their respective queues and there's no traffic in the priority queues, that's when the rest of the queues will be able to fight over the remaining bandwidth. Now, if you wanted to tweak the, uh, if you wanted to tweak the algorithm to prioritize certain queues over the other, then you have the option of setting a weight for these particular queues. If you look at the example over here, we have three normal queues. Two queues have a weight of 10 and one queue has a weight of 20. Now, this is a weighted average, so higher the weight, uh, the more frequently the queue would be able to send traffic out. So in this particular example, the queue with the weight of 20 would be able to send traffic twice for every one time that the queue with weight 10 can send traffic out. The final piece of the puzzle when it comes to the QS tool set is shaping. Uh, shaping helps us to limit the amount of traffic to configure rate. Uh, it's very similar in function to the policing. Uh, the only difference is what we do with the excess traffic. In policing, the excess traffic is simply dropped, whereas with shaping, we're going to queue the excess traffic and we're going to send it out at a later time. Uh, so uh, we're going to uh, buffer the, tra the excess traffic and we're going to smooth out the traffic curve. So quickly summarizing the entire QoS toolset, the first step is to identify and split the traffic, that's classification. Next, we have policing that allows us to control the rate of traffic that goes through the system. Uh, we have marking. Marking helps us to label the packets either to be referenced at a later point within the same switch or at a completely different switch, either downstream or upstream. Then we have queuing and scheduling where we have taken the traffic that is classified and we're separating them into different, different queues and we're defining different uh, uh, rules for different queues. And finally, we have shaping, uh, where again, very similar to policing, we're controlling the amount of traffic that goes out of the system. Uh, the only difference is what we do with the excess traffic, we're going to buffer the excess traffic and set it out at a later time. So now we're going to take a look at the fundamental actions that we can perform within the UADP ASIC. So think of this as uh, a packet lifecycle uh, and then the operations that we can perform depending upon where the packet is within the lifecycle. The packet first enters the system. The first thing that we do is we're going to trust the packet. Trust is very simple. What this means is we're simply going to retain any tag that is present in the packet as it is. So if the packet already comes in with the TSCP or a cross tag, we're not going to change those tags. We're just going to retain it as it is and we're going to continue processing the packet. Next, we have the ingress tool set. We have the classification. We have the policing and the marking. On the egress side, we're going to split. We can have a total of up to eight queues. All eight can be normal queues or we can have two priority queues and six normal queues. The scheduler defines when each queue can send traffic out onto the wire, but before the traffic hits the wire, we have the egress tool set, we have the classification, we have the policing and the shaping, and we have the marking operations. So now looking at an actual packet walk, uh, here uh, the packet comes in at the lower left corner and the packet egresses out on the lower right corner. So the first step is the packet comes in from the network interfaces, it hits the MAXEC engine. Now the MAXEC engine is responsible for stripping out MAXEC headers if available. Uh, once, the once the packet, the clear packet has been, uh, once the MAXEC, MAXEC engine generates the clear packet, a couple of things happen. One, the copy of the header is sent to the ingress routing controller and the full packet is saved onto the EQS block or the unified packet buffer, the buffering system that we have over here. The full packet is stored in the buffer and the SQS or the EQS block that you see to the right side over here, that is responsible for queuing and scheduling. That is going to determine uh, when and how this packet will get sent out onto the wire. 
So the header that's present on the IOC, we do a lookup on the basis of the header. Once we've determined the, the, the egress port where the packet has to go out of, the packet is sent from the unified packet buffer onto the egress forwarding controller. From the egress forwarding controller, we're gonna send it to the rewrite engine in case we want to perform any rewrite operations like changing the, 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 the label on the packet before we send it out onto the wire again. So looking at the operations that we can perform depending upon the block, on the ingress forwarding controller, we can do classification, we can do policing, and we can do marking. And on the egress forwarding controller, we can do classification, policing, as well as uh, marking. So here, the right, on the right side, we have the EQS block. This block is responsible for queuing and for scheduling the packets. Uh, we have also noticed that we have not spoken about a block to the left, which is the IQS block. So here in this example that I've just explained here, we're talking about a, an example where the incoming and the egress interfaces both belong to the same ASIC. Some of our switches have multiple ASICs and it, there might be a situation where the packet is coming in on one ASIC and is egressing out on a different ASIC. In these situations, uh, the IQS block would come into picture. The packet is sent to the IQS block and from the IQS block, it is sent to the EQS block uh, on the corresponding ASIC where the egress port is. Is present. So, summarizing the entire video uh, as it is today, as it is right now, right? We have what we call the UADP QoS tool set. And in terms of where we can apply it, or we can either apply it on the incoming direction, there is an ingress interface, or we can apply it on the egress direction or the egress interface. So, correspondingly, we have what we call the ingress policy map and the egress policy map. Now, on the ingress policy map, in terms of what we can do, we can do classification, marking, and policing. On the egress side, we can do classification, we can do queuing and scheduling, we can do policing and shaping as well as marking. Now, that brings us to the end of this particular video. Again, this is meant to be part one in a series of videos that talks about QoS as a whole. And this is more of an introductory video where we talk about the QoS fundamentals. So in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to take a particular use case. We're going to define a traffic pattern that is, going to, that is traversing through the switch. And based upon the traffic pattern that we have defined, we're going to generate and configure a QoS policy from scratch. So please do click the, the bell icon as well as the subscribe button to be notified when that video goes live, as well as to be notified when uh, other videos that we upload on this channel goes live. Uh, as always, please leave your comments and feedback in the comment section down below. And uh, thank you for your time and have a good day.